A lot of AI teams start with Langchain because it feels like a shortcut. A neat toolbox that connects LLMs, memory and tools in minutes. And for prototypes, it's fantastic. The problem? Many founders and engineers are discovering the moment they hit production scale, Langchain stops feeling like a shortcut and starts feeling like a wall. I've been working with SaaS and AI teams long enough to see the same story play out. The same framework that speed up your MVP is now slowing down your go live, adding latency and making debugging a nightmare. If you want deep discussions on SaaS, AI product strategy and architecture and to avoid pitfalls like this before the burn time and budget, I would request you to subscribe to our channel and press that bell icon. I share deep dives like this on SaaS, AI and product strategy every week. We also send a lot of free giveaways like ebooks, templates, and worksheets to our subscribers regularly. Now, let's see why this matters. For a founder, CTO, or a lead engineer, production readiness isn't just a nice to have. Downtime costs money, latency kills user experience, and when your product depends on LLM calls, the margin for error is too small. A 2024 Hugging Face LLM of survey found that while 45% of AI experiments use Langchain, only 12% of production deployments kept it. That's a massive drop off. And the reasons aren't just opinion, they are miserable. Slow cold starts in serverless environment, poor concurrency handling and opaque debugging that forces developers to dig through layers of abstraction just to find a broken prompt. If you are scaling a SaaS platform or building an enterprise gate AI product, ignoring this risk could mean rewriting your code in the middle of customer onboarding, something no investor or user wants to hear. Now Langchain's architecture prioritizes speed of setup over control of execution. That's fine for a hackathon, but production systems need reliability observability and predictable performance. Because the framework wraps so much logic inside chains, you get tight coupling and hidden dependencies. Developers often discover too late that a minor prompt tweak breaks the entire execution path and tracing that failure isn't that straightforward. Yohi Nakazima, creator of Baby AGI, summed it up very well. Langchain taught us a lot, but now I prefer writing custom logic with Langgraph or straight Python. More transparent, less magic. So the takeaway, use it to learn the concepts, but design your production pipeline with minimal magic layers. In real SaaS workloads, milliseconds matter. But Langchain's abstractions can add over a second of latency per API call, especially when memory components or agent executors are in play. One developer on LinkedIn reported that removing Langchain's memory wrapper instantly cut API latency by 1.3 seconds without changing the model or infrastructure. In high traffic environment, that's the difference between a smooth conversation and a churned user. Microsoft's AutoChain benchmark show fewer tool call errors and low latency simply by bypassing Langchain's orchestration layer. So if your AI product needs a real-time responses like customer support bots, trading assistants, or live co-pilots, these delays can make the system unusable. When something breaks in Langchain, the problem could be in your prompt in your chain definition or your callbacks or maybe the framework's internals. Without strong observability, you are essentially reverse engineering your own stack every time something fails. Agents of Discord logs show real cases where Langchain's agent executed chain fails silently during tool calls, leaving no clear trace. That's unacceptable for many mission critical SaaS software. Contrast this with frameworks like Langgraph, which provides event-driven debugging and transparent execution flows. In production, you need that level of visibility. Without it, you are guessing under pressure.
High concurrency environments like multi tenant SaaS platforms expose Langchain's limited asynchronous support. In serverless setups, cold starts compound the problem, leading to unpredictable delays and dropped sessions. This is one reason many enterprise teams treat Langchain as a POC only tool migrating to modular stacks with fast API, Redis, and direct LLM calls for production. If your architecture depends on processing thousands of concurrent agent actions, think workflow orchestration or real-time summarization, Langchain's current execution model will likely be your bottleneck. Langchains pull in a large dependency graph, often including packages you will never use. That increases your ad hoc surface, inflates your container size and slows deployments. More critically, its design encourages you to build around its abstraction, making it painful to swap out components later. Developers on Reddit machine learning have shared stories of multi-month rewrites just to remove Langchains from a growing product. Harrison Chase, Langchain's own founder, has said, it's not a product, it's a toolbox. Use only what you need. The problem is, many teams do not realize they have locked themselves into a whole box until it is too late. In production AI systems, context is valuable. But excess context quickly becomes a waste. Langchain's default memory setups often store far more conversation history than needed. That means extra tokens, extra API calls, and a big monthly bill. I have worked with one enterprise where we replaced Langchain's default memory with a custom trim down solution. The result, 28% lower OpenAI cost in the first month plus faster responses. When you are serving thousands of users, that's the difference between healthy margins and constant cost firefighting. Langchain advertises connectors for hundreds of APIs. On paper, it's impressive, but in production, the reality is different. Most connectors are community-built, lightly tested, and lack the resilience you need for uptime guarantees. With proper retries, fallbacks, and monitoring, an upstream API change can silently break a critical workflow. You will only find out when support tickets flood in. In consumer apps, that's a bad day. In enterprise SaaS, it's a lost customer or worse, a terminated contract. You do not have to abandon orchestration to avoid Langchain's limits. In fact, 80% of Langchain's functionality can be replicated with simpler, faster, more controllable tools, like direct API calls for full prompt and response control, Langgraph or Autogen for flexibility workflows, a custom orchestration stack with fast APIs, Celery, and Redis for scalability. I have seen startups switch from Langchain to linear stacks and immediately cut latency and cost without losing its core features. Moving away from Langchain doesn't have to be a painful rewrite. A smarter approach is a phase replacement. Like first, abstract it away. Wrap Langchain code in your own function so you can swap later. And second, replace memory and tools handling first. These yield the biggest immediate gains. And then add observability. Use agent ops, Langsmith, or open telemetry to pinpoint bottlenecks. Then you can test direct LLM calls in parallel to major cost and speed improvements. This lets you keep delivering new features while steadily regaining control of your architecture. So guys, Langchain is a great way to experiment and get a prototype working. But once you are in production, your priorities change. Stability, speed, and cost control start to matter more than quick setup. If you design your stack with scale in mind from the beginning, you will avoid painful rewrites. Keep your infrastructure costs predictable and ensure your AI features work reliably for every user, every time. I regularly share practical strategies on SaaS, AI, and product architecture that come from real-world projects, not just theory.
Please subscribe to the channel if you want to keep learning how to build system that last. Thank you so much for watching.